Welcome to Charge Heads, my name's Tim. Don't worry, it's not all bad. It seems to be that the TVR build is quite a bit over budget. Now, as a lot of early subscribers will know, I had a budget of 50K. Should I be spending 50,000 pounds on EV converting a TVR? Well, probably not, but I'm gonna anyway. It's a lot of money and it took me a little while to get my head around that that's what I need to spend to make this project exciting, using used parts and to get it to the standard and safety that I really, really want. Met Ralph because he was interested in doing the project, which is great because it's it's great to have that passion excitement because uh, as you know, I'm really excited about this project. Woo! Always am always will be. He gave me an estimate of 50k and I thought okay do you know what I will have a little bit up my sleeve because you know what these things are like they can go with budget. It's a bit like grand designs isn't it? You started out with a budget idea of 835. So how much did you spend? About two and a half million. It's a bit like that for the TVR energy <laughs> build to be honest. So um, I sat down with Ralph and we went through it realistically to finish the project if there's not really too many variables it's going to cost considerably more than 50. so i'm waiting for ralph and his team to get a cost to finish the build because i'm sorry to say i might actually have to sell the griffith to be able to finish the project no! I did want to put the TVR 5 litre V8 versus the electric TVR. It's not the end of the world. Got a friend's car in mind, which is very similar performance to the TVR Griffith. Or we could borrow another TVR Griffith. Charge heads. Yes, I am still a bit of a petrol head. I'm sorry. I'm a car enthusiast at the end of the day, but this is charge heads. This is, you know, why I've started it. I want to have a exciting electric car. So that's where we are at the moment. A cost that I hadn't factored in, again, naively, was um, Ralph's time. And Ralph has spent loads and loads of time on this project and he probably hasn't accounted some of the hours. And I'm sure a lot of EV converters and people experienced in this uh, scene, this niche scene will know that there are a lot of hours that go in. So so yeah, he's you know he's doing very lots and lots of hard work and he's, you know, he's, He's doing a very, very good job, but I hadn't factored in the costs of, you know, the filming and and, and stuff like that. So I'm waiting for a cost from uh, Ralph, just so I've got an absolute cost. I look forward to that. But anyway, enough of me rambling on. I thought I'd give you an honest update with what's happening to the electric TVR. Now I'm gonna show you in the workshop what's happened since the Orion BMS2 has arrived. Hi Charge Heads, Tim here. Um, we're in a very, very cold workshop. Um, Ralph said it was minus four this morning, but here we are in Ralph's workshop, or is it the Charge Heads workshop? I'll let you decide. I'm gonna show you a couple of things that have been happening to the TVR wedge. So, let's go and have a look. Here we have the Orion BMS, and it's the Orion BMS 2, which I've been told is actually quite rare at the moment, uh, quite hard to get hold of. Uh, so this arrived from Zero EV, or Felton, um, and this is gonna be going into location just under the battery box, uh, next to the inverter there, where the Tesla uh, small drive unit is. So it'll be uh, interested to see where that's mounted. I think it's literally just under there, just enough space. And um, Ralph's just shown me, uh, in terms of the electronics, how they're getting the batteries modules connected to the BMS, which I'll show in a second. But something also over here, um, Ralph had uh, Peterson EV come over uh, and talk to him, because he does a few EV projects, uh, but also looked at this as well, and uh, gave us a few options and prices on remodeling the TVR clocks because um, as a lot of people know we want to make sure from a legality point of view uh, we've got the speedo working um, and to have you know the temperature gauges etc would be very very useful got the tank fuel tank uh, water temperature miles an hour uh, taco oil temperature and battery power and a few other uh, exciting Ooh, lo low oil pressure I think we'll be all right with that now and we've got the um, some dodgy quartz clock there so there could be a few changes here got a couple of the battery module cooling plates here and um, just in the back here where the rear battery modules are um, the guys have been able to fit 
just underneath there you might be able to see the battery uh, cooling plates under there and under there so it's all going on and a bit of a spaghetti junction of wires so uh, so yeah it's all all happening um, let me take you over to the what's happening with the batteries so here we have the battery modules these are the mg battery modules and what ralph is doing i'm not sure how he's doing it because it's so bloody cold at the moment i won't be able to do anything as fiddly as this um, he's connecting the uh, battery modules to the orion bms so he's working out the uh, wiring here those a bit more technical than myself or well, i'd say a lot more technical than myself uh will know what he's doing here so uh, if you've got any questions i can certainly ask ralph um in in how he's how he's doing that because i have got not a clue and he's not he's not here at the moment unfortunately but that just gives you a rundown that you know that is very much in process with regards to the batteries so there we go so that's the update on the TVR build at the moment. Hashtag TVR wedgie. So I'm really excited by uh, another development in the build, uh, which is thanks to Nick at Eco Classics, because he has got a DC to DC charger, which also gives us the capability of vehicle to load. Um, so those who don't know what that basically means, you might've heard of vehicle to grid before, where you can, uh, put the energy in your battery of your car back into the grid or back into your house. This is a slightly more simplified version uh, which allows the TVR to uh, have a three pin uh, output basically. So uh, in the UK that's 240 volts. So we'd be able to trickle charge the Tesla or we'd be able to um, uh, basically run a fridge on a summer's day, keep the beers in, nice. And all sorts of other manner of uh, uh, options. So we're going to talk to uh, Nick, I hope, very, very soon to get a bit more detail in that. And if anyone can think of some fantastic things for the TVR wedgie to power uh, moving into the uh, spring and summer, then let us know in the comments because I'd love to hear some weird and wonderful things that an electric TVR could power. Uh, some ironic ones would be quite... Uh, a music i'll have a think if you can too that would be good but that's it for now um i hope you enjoy the episode slightly different uh because of what i mentioned earlier um so thank you very much for watching and i'm looking forward to the next update see you later